there is a version of, of the equation of the plane for Cartesian in Earth, which is called Cartesian equation. Unfortunately, or fortunately for you, it's something you probably know. Uh, unfortunately, it's just the one which exists only in three dimensions. You cannot produce any analogy of that for the higher dimensions, unlike line, for instance, for the line, when we discussed with you Cartesian equation of the line, we actually we found the form of that equation for any dimensions. Whereas with the equation we have only we have we have only R three case. For any other higher dimensions, you have to approach planes with the with the vector form as the only way to approach planes for the higher dimensions. So basically what you do when you convert, if you need to convert your vector form into the Cartesian form, all you do is just you replace every vector here with the component forms of that vector. So here, all three vectors A, B, and C, they came from R3. All these three vectors they all came from R3. So all you do is just replace them. Like for instance, for the A, you have the coordinates of that A, like this, for instance. For B vector, that's the components of the B vector in general. For the C vector, that's the components of your C vector. So your equation will start looking like this in the component form, like this. Uh, so that's your equation. And you, if you replace your x vector with the components again, it's the same vector equation of the plane. But now, but now this is equation is, which is written in the like a coordinate form. Normally, very often in your yellow book or even in lecture notes, when they talk about when they talk about R three. When you talk about this particular uh, vector space, three-dimensional one, they don't use the x1, x2, x3. It's like a more like for the higher dimensions. They, for this one, they often just resort to the classical something you know very well, like uh, they use the xyz notation, uh, just to show you the link that this, this is a particular case where you have really visual connection with the normal 3D space. Now, when you have, it, when you have your vector equation written like this, in all per component form, all you have to do, you have to write this equation in now in the per component form, in fact. So you write this, for instance, you go x take a1 equal to lambda times b1 mu times c1. So you convert it like this. You convert every component like this. Second one will be y, this y. Subtract this a2 on one side. I just, you see, I move this vector on the left hand side. And on the, on the right hand side, you will have this lambda with this b2 and this mu with this c2. Here it is. Similarly, you do the last component of your equation. And now, after you've written all of it like that, you look at this together. And all you have to do, you have to get rid of the presence of lambda and mu in all of these three equations. Uh, there is no unified way to do it with the in this general setting, so that's why I put here like this. Uh, you have to get rid of the lambda and mu. We will do it on a, on, a, on an example, right? Another example in my handwritten solutions, and that's where you pick up the idea how exactly we get rid of that. It's not really that difficult. You sort of just as if as if you're solving for the for x, y, and z. Well, you solve you you basically you just solve for lambda and mu in the first two equations, and you then sub in into the third one. So when you solve for the lambda and mu in the first two, you will, have, you, you will end up with a result which depends on x and y. When you sub in, in here, when you sub in, in here, lambda and mu will be gone, and the whole equation will take a form where only x, y, and z present. That's, that's how the method goes. You, in principle, you can, of course, do it with the up abstract parameters like this, but it will look horrible, and I don't want to torture you with that. We just do it on some examples. And that's okay. So I think it's, uh, that's all I have. And if you do that, if you do what I just said, I mean, we'll, we'll see this on the examples. If you solve here for lambda and mu, if you sub it in here, if you bring everything together, all x's in one place, all y's in one place, all z's in one place, you will end up with the equation like this. It will be some coefficient, some coefficient a. Normally, we, know, we denote it with a capital, which depends on these components of all of these vectors involved in your vector equation of the plane. Then there will be some y present with some joint b coefficient, which normally denoted with b. There will be z present. There will be some free coefficient with no x, y, z next to it. And all of that will be equal to 0. So that's how, in general, 
That's how, in general, Cartesian equation of the plane looks in R3. And the step from the vector form to the Cartesian form follows down this road. I, I described the algorithm for you in rather vague terms. I'll just demonstrate this algorithm on the one particular example. However, before I do that, actually one question which, I, which I'd like to ask you. In this Cartesian equation of the plane, these first three coefficients, which, well, I don't know, they depend, they depend on, the, on the components of these vectors in, in a rather complex way. That's why I don't have a formula for them. Uh, but yet, yeah, these three coefficients, these first three, they have some interesting geometrical interpretation. Do you know this interpretation? Like, these coefficients, well, I can tell you that. These coefficients, if you combine a vector, a vector out of it, like this, normally we call this vector n, and it's a vector associated with the Cartesian equation of the plane. Uh, this, this vector will have later, I mean, it, it is true, we just, we don't see it yet, we will see it later. This vector is in fact the vector of normal, or nor normal vector to the plane. Do you know what the normal vector means? It's the one which is orthogonal to the plane. So we're just sticking out perpendicular to the whole level plane. 